Welcome back to The Airdale. I'm Shelby Bishop. And I'm Chloe Lewis. Today we'll be taking a look at suicide prevention, taking a break from technology, dance, and much, much more coming up on The, the Airdale. Airdale. Directly from the Alma High School News Studio, covering news and sports from where it matters. You're watching The Airdale. Some may take it as a joke, some may take it to heart. Brianna Langston has more about bullying. Bullying is a problem many people face throughout life. Bullies prey on people's emotions in order to intimidate or seek harm. Bullying includes actions such as making threats, spreading rumors, attacking someone's physical, physically or verbally, and excluding someone from a group on purpose. I always intervene simply because I would never want to be the kid that was being bullied by somebody else and nobody stepped in to help. Bullies find it fun to bully people and make them feel like they're trash or they're not wanted. There are three types of bullying. Verbal bullying is saying or writing something mean. Social bullying, sometimes referred to as Relational bullying involves hurting someone's reputation or re relationships. Physical bullying involves hurting a person's body or possessions. Uh, sometimes I'll put my arm around a student's shoulders and kind of walk with them a little bit. Usually the, the student who's doing the bullying will look at that as, uh-oh, maybe I should just leave this one alone because Commander just put his arm around their shoulder, so he obviously knows Commander. Sometimes I don't even know the kid. I just do it because they need a friend at that point in time. According to the National Center for Educational Stats, there are about 20% of student ages 12, 12 and 18 experienced with bullying nationwide. Bullying is a problem that must be stopped. This is Brianna Langston signing off with Airwave Media. Ready on set. Take a look at what it looks like behind the scenes of tech theater. Chloe Lewis has more. What is technical theater? You know, really it's the magic that happens uh, on stage and backstage. Uh, whenever audiences come and watch a show, they focus on the actors, they focus on the dancing, the singing, the words, the lights, the sound. But really, uh, it's the people backstage that are doing the technical side of it that's creating, you know, that spectacle that the audience loves to see. What can a student do when in technical theater? Uh, students can get involved with um, building the set. They can even have a say in the set design. Uh, they can get involved in the costuming. Uh, if, you, if there are some students which we've had that have uh, sewing skills or costuming skills, then they can get involved that way. Uh, prop making, we try to make as many props as possible or you know, even modifying props that we have. And so students in stagecraft get to help create those props or, or help to modify them. We have students that help with the lighting. They learn how to hang lights, how to focus lights here. Uh, some will actually get to go up to the booth and, and help with the lighting design or you know more practically they get to help with the actual running of the show. I'm Chloe Lewis from Airwaves Media. Students come from all around the world to learn what it's like in a new country. Evan Shibley has more. Students from all over the world travel to the United States to experience the culture, customs, and the different style of schooling of America. The key term is travel, and recently that has been a problem for foreign exchange students. It's been very difficult to um, get all the students to travel to the United States, and so each country released the students at different times this year. Normally all students are released to travel to their schools starting in July and then they um, the schools dictate when they will start and the students can travel. This year they didn't really um, allow the students to even get their visas until late July, early August and then um, they were this the visa departments were so overrun that uh, it took them a long time to process visas. So that held the students up. COVID held the students up with the flying. And when they arrived to the United States, each student has been asked to um, quarantine for 14 days before they come to campus. One foreign exchange student has some things to say about traveling and her experience in America. No, I'm so excited to be in America right now because I don't want to stay here 
And no, I mean, like, I don't want to stop here with my study in Vietnam, you know, because I just love the Amer American is education system so bad. And I love the way the teacher and the, uh, the student are, and I don't really like the uniform. So yeah, I just like the Americans. There was, there is really unforgettable experiment and experience in America, let me see. So like on my last day in March last year, uh, my friends celebrate, celebrated for me a secret, secret birthday at my chemistry teacher's home. So it was my last day and that day is the day I leave and it's also my birthday and I was surprised and then I was almost crying so bad. Okay, so they will experience a lot of new things like eating cuisine, like try different cuisine. is maybe like hard to eat, but it may be good. Who knows? Depends. And also like you can make friends from other country. It's pretty cool. Like you can kind of learn something from them and then you can kind of learn another language and you can learn some very funny facts about the people. If interested in joining the foreign exchange program, contact Ms. Parham. This has been Evan Shirley for Airways Media. Thanks for watching. The month of September is Suicide Prevention Month and with this subject comes heartache and sorrow. Jean Alexander has more. Suicide. Suicide is a permanent solution for a temporary problem. Most people joke about this on a day-to-day -day basis, when in reality, it is a very heavy topic to speak about. Um, we just need to look out for each other. Notice when a, a student's not just having a bad day, but having multiple days in a row that are really rough. That kind of plays into it. Um, there's, there's several days of what can be called depression. Um, maybe they talk about it a lot and then they say they're just joking, but there's something that tells you that they might not be joking. Um, you know that things are kind of upside down in their world, maybe not going how they want it to. Um, and you may think that they're just saying it for attention, but if they don't get the attention that they want from saying it, then what's the next step going to be for them to get the attention that they are, they're asking for? A lot of students will give some warning signs. A lot of um, young adults will give warning signs, but not always. Sometimes it's very impulsive. Um, sometimes once they make up their mind to die by suicide, to take their own lives, they don't let anybody know. And that's the hard part. That's when they don't want any help because they've, they've made that decision. Um, so we just need to circle the wagons around our people and let them know that we're here for them. And if you hear someone talking about it, let someone know, let an adult know, let your parents know, let a counselor know. And we don't have to tell who told, but we will kind of swoop in and, and do what we need to do, kind of try to work our magic. Um, like I said a minute ago, they're just feeling really down about things. Um, maybe the littlest thing sets them off. Um, maybe they got a bad grade on a test or something, and that's not a little thing, but um, maybe something didn't go the way that they thought it should, and it just really, really sets them off. Um, they start giving away their prized possessions, something that means a lot to them. They're giving them away. Um, they they talk about it, and but sometimes they don't talk about it, so that part's kind of hard to know. Um, but you just get this gut feeling that something's not right. Yeah. The month of September is suicide prevention, which having been affected by the recent happenings here at Alma High with a fellow student, we take this subject to heart. Okay. Um, we, we all grieve the loss of the student. Um, you know, it's sudden. We wonder why. We wonder what we could have done t differently. We wonder, you know, if I had done one thing, if I had said one thing nicer, kinder, you know, if I had caught on to something, would it be different? And a lot of times, no, it wouldn't have been different. So we've got to let ourselves go of that guilt. Um, a lot of people question if they had anything to do with the situation. You know, they deal with a lot of guilt. So we have to let them know that it's not their fault. Um, you know, if they had a conversation with the student or the young adult before they took their own life, um, that person probably had already made up their mind. So, you know, you can't hold on to that guilt of, of, of that conversation. Um, 
there's a stigma around suicide that it's a very selfish thing. But what we have to remember is that students or people who take their own lives, it's really no longer that person making that decision. Nine times out of 10, it's not impulsive. You know, it's not out of an anger impulse where they just decide to end it. It's, it's a long spiral down and that has to do with depression. So it's the depression that we can be mad at. It's the depression that really talks them into it where they don't see any other way out. Please help stop the number of suicides in teens and young adults. There's a big movement in the country and the world to really change the term committed suicide to died by suicide because committed suicide makes it sound like that person had the choice, like when you commit a crime, okay? Really, if it's depression, it's no longer that person making the choice. They don't see any other option. So we say died by suicide, kind of like died by another form like a fire or something like that, um, because it isn't that person making that choice. It's the mental illness. It's their brain not working correctly. So if the person that we really know and love, like from three years ago that wasn't in the state of depression, they would not have made that choice. Concerned about someone that may be taking their own life. Um, say you get a Snapchat in the middle of the night or you see a TikTok video or, or something lets you know that they're not okay. If it's after hours, if it's not during school hours, call 911, okay? They will send the police out to check on them because at that time, the most important thing is making sure that they're still here. They may be mad at you for telling, but they will be here for you for them to be mad at you. And that's okay, we can work with them being mad. We just want them here. Um, if you find out something during school hours, come let a counselor know, um, come let the office know, and then if we're not available, you know, we'll figure out something, um, and then we'll put, we'll get the ball rolling on getting them the help that they need. So you just gotta tell someone, don't, don't sit on it. This is June Alexander for Airwaves Media, signing off. Things are changing fast here in the Alma community. Along with the sides are a few renovations from our pack. Lincoln Medlock and Shooter Owens has more. The backstage is getting renovated because over the past 20 years they have dumped 100 gallons of water, 6 tons of sand, and a bus on the stage without replacing the floors. Every time they do a play, or a few, they repaint the stage floor. Well, you know, the Performing Arts Center, the, uh, the stage has been in there ever since we built the Performing Arts Center in 2001, so it's, it's roughly 20 years old. There's been a lot of performances on that wood stage. We have, uh, through our dance show, we've even flooded the stage and had to, I mean, that was intentional flooding, but we also had to put a bunch of different kind of paints and preservation uh, down on the floor. And over time, that has built up and just made the, the floor uh, it, the integrity is fine, but it's starting to, to look a little worn and misshapen. And so we're, we need to pull those boards up and uh, com completely redo the flooring. Uh, prior to doing this, you know, at, usually a stage with this has this much use usually lasts about 10, 15 years. Ours is overdue. Uh, it's not really a safety issue other than it's time. This all helps the pack for multiple reasons. Well, the renovation will benefit the pack because it, we're, like I said, we're overdue and the amount of performances, the troops that come in, uh, we're a venue that hosts a lot of different events and it needs, and we need to have a, a floor that um, is not starting to show signs of wear. Needed, it, it's kind of a relative thing. Uh, eventually a stage needs to be redone. It's kind of like a basketball court or anything like that. It just needs to be refinished. The renovation will help keep the stage looking good and keeping the actors safe. If you take a good look at it, and you can't really see it from the audience, but if you look at it from, from the actor's perspective, you can see a lot of divots in it, a lot of holes that have been drilled in it. It's 20 years old, but we're just doing just the bare minimum of, of just replacing the top layer. So this is honestly the perfect time to do this. Um, I, it's gonna be a lot of work. I'm looking at it one sheet, it's 170 sheets of plywood that have to go down. So exactly, it's a lot of screws, it's gonna be a lot of work, but the end result is gonna be so much better than what we've got right now. I'm Lincoln Medlock from Airways Media. Technology, something we use every day, but are we using technology too much? Andrew Cronister takes a closer look. Many people have been fed the information that students are addicted to technology. Some people agree and others don't. 
Um, most definitely. It's the 20th century. There is more access. You have the technology. Everywhere you go, you're bound to find some sort of like electronic device. Just, it's everywhere, so it's easier to become addicted. Studies have been shown that taking a break every now and again for a few hours can drastically improve your mental health. Um, most definitely because it can just improve your mental uh, health like a lot because whenever you're on the internet you tend to see just like the toxic body standards, the toxic ideals of life, toxic rules that you have to follow. So I think taking a break would be definitely beneficial to you and your mental health. I suggest taking some free time to turn off your phone and do something active like working out or playing a card game. I am Andrew Chronister with Airwaves. Thank you for watching. 2020 has been a battle for many people. While a lot has happened, many have redirected their focus on family and close friends. Zach Miller has more. Alma High School has been affected by everything that's happened from January 1st. Some went to school to graduate. Some got closer to family. Let's take a look at how your fellow students and teachers have been affected. So I've graduated college with my biology degree and then I started here at Alma over the summer starting in June. Here is how Corona has affected one of your fellow teachers. So I really, I've always been close to my own parents, but I grew closer to them. And then on August 3rd, my own mother contracted COVID and almost passed away from it. And it really brought home to me how quick you can get sick from this and be at death's door. Let's find out how one of your fellow students feel about school. Well, big one is school being closed, not being able to socialize with people and having to wear masks all the time. Having to socialize was a big part of coming to school. The big reason why I came was to be around people and not be able to do it every day was kind of harsh. Here's some advice to get you through this school year. Uh, have a lot of grace for each other. Um, have a lot of patience. Have a lot of understanding. I am Zachary Miller from Airways Media. Reserve Officers Training Corps. Lucas Bunn and Damian Hallmark have more. NJROTC is a great program to introduce students to a structure that can help them become more successful. What drives cadets to success is that success is something that's very infectious. And cadets see others being successful and they want to be successful themselves. The ribbons that we wear on our chest are a prime example of that because you can look at the ribbons on somebody's chest and automatically know that they've been successful in all of those areas or they wouldn't be wearing those ribbons. When a cadet receives their first ribbon, it's something to be very proud about and it's infectious. You want more. You want another ribbon and another one and another one and you want people to look at you and your teachers and family and friends and know that you've been successful or you wouldn't have received all of those awards and, acc and accolades. NJROTC is a program sponsored in part by the U.S. Navy in which young men and women will focus on the Navy Corps values of honor, courage, and commitment as they will learn to become mature and responsible adults. I absolutely love working with teenagers. They don't drive me crazy like everybody told me they would. Um, I'd much rather be around teenagers than adults. I love working with you guys because it's an opportunity to help you grow and develop and become mature, responsible, and productive adults. It's a beautiful feeling when I hear stories about students that have graduated who have now gone on to college, to careers, to military careers. It's just a beautiful feeling feelings. The students of NJROTC are challenged to work hard for their accomplishments in order to help them become more successful adults. And I, I truly believe that if you're having fun and you can make learning fun, that you're going to retain a lot more of that knowledge. Um, you guys have enough stress in your other classes here. Your, your core classes of English, math, science, and history can be very stressful at times. And this is an opportunity for you to come in here, get rid of some of that stress. Maybe we get a little louder at times. We do some physical fitness. We play some games where we have loud outbursts and jeopardy. But at the same time, we're learning in everything we do. And you're going to retain more of that knowledge because you're relaxed while you're learning. You're not stressed out and uptight. That's how I choose to teach and so far it has worked extremely well. And NJROTC is a great way to de-stress and give students a chance to do something different than their core classes. This program is an opportunity to, for success and to flourish. I don't think keeping everybody successful is an option. But if you will imagine yourself walking down the beach and there's millions of starfish that have washed up on the beach. And as you're walking down the beach, you're picking those starfish up and throwing them back into the ocean. 
And a man comes by and says, what are you doing throwing all of these starfish back in the ocean? You can't save all of them. And the response was, no, but I just saved that one. And I took that to heart because I truly believe that while you can't change everybody and you can't help everybody to become successful. I think every year there are cadets that graduate from this program who are more successful as a result of this program. Maybe they're more mature and responsible, uh, maybe they're held to a higher standard, uh, or maybe it just gave them something to strive for where they fit in. If they didn't fit in in band or choir or athletics, maybe this is a spot they did fit in. For Airwaves Media, I'm Lucas Bunn. Imagine seeing a sentence and not being able to connect the words with your speech. This is what it's like for many who have dyslexia. Trenton Broyles has more. Dyslexia can affect many people. Uh, they have between probably seven and ten students. So I would say on average there's probably at least ten students per grade that have been diagnosed with dyslexia and there's probably more. We just uh, haven't tested them or for some reason have just kind of slipped through the cracks. Dyslexia can affect people in many different ways. Dyslexia, um, a lot of people think that it's when you turn your letters backwards, like B's look like D's and D's look like B's, but that's really not the case. It's more of the connections in your brain where you're, you don't make the connection between the phonic sound and what the letter actually looks like or you hear the phonic sound, but you don't know how to write the letter because you're not sure how it looks. And so what we do in dyslexia therapy is help you with all your phonetic sounds so that you can sound out words, and also help you write uh, the letters the correct way. And then when you put that all together, then you can begin to comprehend the things that you read um, so that you can be more successful in life. Dyslexia therapy has helped many people. Um, I think with this new program that we're doing, I think it has um, helped a lot of students. I think that it's helping a lot of students in the future. I'm Trenton Broyles, signing out for the Airedale. The cooler weather is setting in and football season is well underway. Here's Zach Millsap on what the Airedales are doing to become successful in the conference play this season. There's only one word to describe Airedale football, resilience. With all the guidelines with the coronavirus, Alma has had tough times and fought hard for us to have a football season. Weightlifting is a major part of the football season. Here's Coach Bush with more. Anytime uh, we can do strength training for any kind of athlete, it doesn't matter football, basketball, track, baseball, softball, uh, strengthening muscles, you know, helps prevent injuries. Uh, it helps, obviously, um, you know, makes us stronger so that we can gain an advantage on our opponents. That's what we uh, we implemented the skills class over a year ago now, and that's part of the big reason. It does give our athletes here at Alma a chance to, to be a little bit better than their opponent uh, each and every week in whatever sport that they play in, and then it helps us prevent injuries. Although the odds are stacked against them, Edo football has fought more than ever to win this conference championship. Well, you know, I think it doesn't matter, you know, where you are, what you're doing. You just have to keep improving every day. You come and, and you study your game, study your craft, listen to your coaches, uh, continue to grow as a person, continue to mature as a person, as a young adult, and, uh, you know, uh, improve in your craft and whatever that may be, the skill set that it takes to play the game. Listen, keep practicing reps, take quality reps. I say that to our guys all the time. Take a good quality rep each and every day, and, and you'll continue to get better a little bit every day. Guidelines have made it very hard to play a football game. Wearing masks, six feet apart, and other guidelines all come into play when we have a football game. Coach Bush describes what all needs to be done to have a safe football game. Well, you know, it's we're the same guidelines as everybody else. I mean, we have our physical distancing rules, and and uh, you know, masks are come into play some due to uh, the inactivity or activity of of each person. You know, when you're not active, you're supposed to have them on. When you're um, when you are active, you can have it off while you're playing and all that. We're trying to. We've tried buckets in the past couple of weeks. We're actually going to go to a cone set up this week, see if we can have all our players on a cone. And then they have to keep the ones that are subbing in for the game have to be able uh, to stay spaced out from their coaches. And the coaches are mandatory. They're supposed to wear them all the time unless unless they are 12 feet um, from from the from the kids or from the sidelines, which it's a little easier on a coach because they're always facing out. So, Make sure you congratulate all aerial sports players on their hard work this year. 
Reporting for Airways Media, this is Zach Millsap. We all know about the Alma Varsity team, but not many talk about our ninth grade football team. Xander Polito has more to cover. The ninth grade Alma football team has been working hard. They are a group of good and hard working students. They are going to continue to improve and keep working out and take it, taking practice serious. I'm thrilled. I mean, our, uh, our program here is uh, really neat to be a part of. It's really nice to take the step to forward, be the head coach of my, my own program. Uh, I hadn't done that before. And the challenge um, has been really exciting and neat to try to figure all the puzzle pieces out. And uh, Coach Bush has been really good, and our senior high coach has been really good and helpful. Um, but really the big thing is our coaches, and our junior high coaches and our uh, players are just a lot of fun to coach. They're, good, they're really good kids, they're a really good group. Prove, and a lot of times, you know, loss can make you look in the mirror and figure out what it is we've got to do better. And I think, I think our kids, after seeing them today and seeing them lift and uh, seeing them refocus and commit to doing what it takes to win, I think our kids are going to improve quite a bit, so I'm excited to see where we go from here. So, The team has talent to be better than what they really are. They just got to find out how good they can really be. But overall, everyone thinks that they can be a good football team. They just got to continue to practice hard, and they got to get ready because they have the whole season in front of them. Yeah, we, all, we always look to grow uh, game to game to see where we can go next. And, Continue to continue to get better and push the envelope. For Aries Media, my name is Xander. Thank you. Alma Dance, what are they doing? How are they making the best out of what they can do? Bobby Taylor has more. The Alma High Dance team is working hard to begin this year. With a new school year, there is some changes to the dance program, like doing the lifts. Um, the main difference between um, dance team has been pretty good this year because we actually have a small team, which has been a huge blessing. Um, and so that we're able to all be at practice together. We're able to um, pretty much practice exactly how we would have been since we do have a smaller team. Um, so that's been a really big blessing in disguise. Um, and then for the classes, it's actually been a lot easier than I thought that it would. Um, all the kids have been really good about wearing the mask when they're too close um, and then being able to take them off, but then being respectful of whenever we get too close to each other, they put them back on. So the students and everyone has actually been really great. Um, so there hasn't been as many changes as I thought there would be. It's just kind of being more mindful. We can't, um, usually we're big into lifts and tricks and builds and things like that. And we can't, um, make contact with each other at all. So that's been the biggest change for the dance team and for the dance program is that we can't touch each other at all. So there are no lifts. There are no anything like that that are happening right now. The new pandemic, there are new rules that have to be Follow like mass and being six feet apart. With COVID, we've had to definitely make changes with um, masks always have to be on. We have to have six feet apart. That's why we try to go to the arena as much as possible. So our big classes can spread out. And then whenever the weather's great, we can go outside. But with COVID, um, whenever we get to like lifts and such, we can't actually do them at the moment because we can't touch each other. We can't lift. Same with our team. Over the summer, we could not even do half of our lifts and tricks because it requires people lifting each other up and touching. Um, but now, with as COVID has gone on and AAA has gone with it, it's been able to kind of ease down and we're able to start. We can take our mask off if we're fully apart and really get to connect with one another. No dancing has the challenges like the space is going to have dancing. The coaches are glad that the option is not available for high school students. There's one remote dance class online for the middle school only, um, which has been, it's proven to be quite challenging to teach kids how to dance <laughs> in a physical space that I don't know how big their living room or their bedroom or, you know, like how much space they actually have. So it's actually been really challenging. Um, I'm actually glad that there are not, is not that option at the high school because I think more kids have have decided to come and be blended and so that they can come to dance class. And that means a lot, just be able to physically talk to someone and tell them how to correct something on the spot versus to wait until they turn in their assignment. And then you have to make a comment and try to 
put into words how they need to fix their movements. It's just a really hard thing to do when you're not in person. So it's actually been great that there's not very many remote classes for dance. With all the challenges everyone is facing, the dance team is working hard to get past those challenges. I'm Bobby Taylor with Ares Media logging off. Clarinets, trumpets, and xylophones, these are all a part of our Alma High School band, Michael Farrell with more. A lot of people have been wondering about how the Alma band will be functioning with the new restrictions and guidelines. Here is Ms. Kennedy with your answers. Well, we have a set of guidelines that have come down from the state specifically for wind instruments, and so we are following those as closely as we can. One of the main guidelines that came down was uh, covering the bells and the openings of our instruments. So for all brass players, we have uh, every bell covered with material, and uh, the flutes actually ha are the most dangerous instrument as far as aerosol transmission, so we have a very special, unique setup for them that involves a face mask and uh, a device that fits on the head joint of the flute and actually captures every bit of air that would be transmitted across the top of the flute. So we are making our instrument playing as safe as possible. In addition to how we play, we are always following the general social distancing guidelines. We never stand closer than six feet uh, together. We're always at least six feet apart or more. And uh, during water breaks, when we're playing, anytime we're anywhere, we are always trying to follow our social distancing guidelines. Well, in a normal situation, a brass player would take the force of their air and blow the excess water out of their instrument to make that much safer. This year, we actually have buckets of kitty litter and when a brass player needs it, they take their instrument up to the bucket and they gently shake the water out. Uh, it's not ideal, but it is safer and it decreases, it eliminates the risk of blowing water and transmitting aerosols into the air. So that's what we do for brass instruments that have to empty the water out of their instrument as the student plays. <laughs> this new tradition has kind of been started, I think this past week where normal during a normal pep rally time during school time on Fridays on a game day the drum line they do not have nearly as many restrictions as wind players uh, concerning the transmission of aerosol so they actually go through the halls and have played and made quite the quite the track I believe last week and really drummed up some awesome school spirit that way in lieu of our typical pep rally at the games our normal bandstand that we have would sit about 30 students roughly uh, with we were to socially distance in order to fit more students and to get a, a band sound that we could really get behind uh, we have added two sets of bleachers one on each side so we've roughly been able to get 60 students now that can play in the stands uh, just like we normally would uh, during the football games uh, pre-game and halftime we usually would march on, on the field up for pregame and at halftime. Those events are in the works and we are working on how we can do those safely at this time. Now for some student opinions on the subject. Well, band's been a lot different ever since COVID, but we're still playing, we're still marching. It's going. It's not great, it's just going. I'd say it's more stressful this year than it has been because you have to take care of a mask and make sure you have that one certain mask. It can't just be a normal mask that you have. That's, that's it. Well, with the restrictions, it has brought, you know, a lot, of, a lot more practice that we need to do to get used to our clarinet, you know, after not playing it for a while after the summer and because of the masks, it takes a lot more effort, you know, a lot more sweat and a lot more effort to get out there and play. Marching on the field, I feel like the first couple days that I've had a mask on, it really kind of, it was hard to breathe and stuff when you're trying to practice. It made you hot and you want to puke, but uh, after getting really used to it and getting kind of more fit into it, I feel like it's really a lot better in terms of having to do that. And I feel like I've really gotten used to it. And it brings us another challenge to the table, which it's not always that bad. This has been Michael Farrell from Airways Media. Thanks for watching. Heirlooms, where you get all your new Airedale styles. Stephen Miller has more. Here in Alma High School, we have an Alma apparel shop called Heirlooms. For anyone looking to get Alma-based clothes, here is some Heirloom workers to inform you on the store. Um, Heirlooms is a school-based enterprise. It's a laboratory for the students in the marketing classes 
and part of our DECO program. The new t-shirts that are black and they say go Airedales, one with a football, basketball, and then we're getting shipments of a new volleyball in. We have some really cool um, retro looking Airedale shirts and then some comfort colored shirts too. Um, you learn communication skills, how to work with the public. You also learn how to grow your network and it gives you um, skills for life outside of high school. As you heard from Hannah, there is some new apparel and some good experiences to get in the school-based enterprise. Now let's hear from Riley. Because of COVID-19, we have new masks in uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different options. We also have scrunchies and keychains along with the several different shirts. Um, because of, of the pandemic, we will be instituting some uh, safety measures here in heirlooms. One that you will see is going to be the plastic shield at the register to help um, have mo more contactless um, service. You will also see the, s the social distancing signs on the floor, uh, people wearing masks, um, which we have those signs posted while they're in the store. And we're going to have our customers in the store limited to three to four customers at a time. Thank you for watching The Airbell. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, follow us on our social media, and as always, by the wise words of Team Mac, remember, Go, go Airbells! Airbells.